Hi guys, and today I thought I'd come to you with another screencast in my ever popular Drupal series. This is part of the Drupal 7 overview segment where I go over some changes in a certain aspect of Drupal between Drupal 6, which is the current stable version, and Drupal 7, the upcoming future release that's currently in alpha. So, in the last video I went over theming, and in this video what I wanted to do was kind of continuation of that, because before I showed you how the theme system worked, but I neglected to mention JavaScript, because I assumed that it, it worked the same, because like I said for theming, there was no documentation denoting that it, no, it worked differently, so I just assumed that it worked the same. But when I came to use it, I found that that is most certainly not the case. So today I'm going to show you how to use JavaScript in Drupal 7 as it stands now. Um, uh, th th this may not be the same when Drupal is released and th this is in no way um, kind of the proper way to do it as sanctioned by the Drupal community but this is kind of a way I found to, to, get, to get it done. So we're, we're on our demonstration site here and the first thing we should say is that um, a lot of my listeners will know about the jQuery library. I've done um, kind of extensive videos on jQuery and used it many, many times. That's because the Drupal content management system use, uses the jQuery library for all its core cool stuff. And what that means is we can leverage the power of jQuery without having to download jQuery for ourselves. So today I'm going to show you kind of specialist things that jQuery requires. So you can see we're on our demonstration site here. And what I'm going to do is pop it open a uh, uh, theme folder. And that's where you put JavaScript um, producing it in your theme folder. Now, in, in Drupal 6, we could... Um, just create a file called <coughs> script.js and then if we went to the page and refresh that would be in our source code but you can see here there's no there's no JavaScript file being loaded apart from, apart from this one, which um, is is not relevant to this particular tutorial. Um, so how do, how do we get it <coughs> get it to load? Well, good question. What we need to do is similar to what we've done to the, for them style sheet here in our info file we need to declare it in our info file so we need to say um script example in syntax we use the style sheet to script equals and then whatever the name of your script is. So in our case, it's script. Dot js. But if we say that, and head on. Back over to our page, and we look at the source code once again. 
That should have been loaded back. This funny Drupal caching stuff going on. So that's why I've got this um, tab open here so I can put in the cache. Um, so now if we do source ones again, we see that several script files are in included. Um, right at the bottom is our JavaScript folder is in, is in our theme folder and we called script.js we notice that it's also loading the um, the dependent version of jQuery the latest version of jQuery and also a whole bunch of other cool stuff so we know we've got that to rely on but now Fortunately, we can't just um, write regular jQuery or even Drupal plus jQuery. There's several things we have to do it now. Now, like I said, this is mentioned nowhere in the documentation, and um, or none of the things that I could find in the comments on Drupal.org worked. So. What I'm about to show you that works is just what I know from previous knowledge. But I don't know if it's the correct way Drupal to do it. But if I show you the correct way, which is to go if um Drupal dot JS enabled so and then do like like a standard function so if it passes that continue on and what this basically says is if if Drupal's ready to accept JavaScript, then do this stuff. Um, so now, now we should just be able to write up a regular jQuery DOM ready statement to make sure jQuery is ready. Um, so we can go. Something like that. That will be a standard jQuery document A function. So we've got the Drupal check wrapped inside the jQuery check. So now if we run something in jQuery, like say. Get all a tag when they clicked. No, let's do something simpler. Let us say, um, as soon as the page loads, trade out all the links. So if we save that and refresh the page over here, we notice that there's still a whole ton of anchor links on the page, or it clearly hasn't hid them. So this is when it goes to my technique. Well. What worked for me is that we don't do this triple dot JS enabled statement, which, like I said earlier, may not be the true proper Drupal way of doing things. It's a bad thing because we're not 
seeing if Drupal's ready um, before we do it. But so my thing is just to take that away and let it get proper. Indenting structures going on now that I've got them. But that doesn't work either. So, what we need to do is stop jQuery from conflicting with other JavaScript libraries because um, the dollar sign is used in prototype and things like that. So, from what I understand, Drupal thinks we're writing prototype code. So obviously it doesn't know how to interpret the jQuery. So what we need to do is set up another variable. So this is this is what when we call this variable, this means we're calling a jQuery object. And don't get confused with anything else. Generally, I call a variable with a dollar sign and then something else because this is what you're going to be calling before you call it jQuery object which I'll explain in a minute <coughs> so it needs to look as, as much like the standard object I'm just going to call it dollar sign ob because then I know it stands for a jQuery object equals So I've told it in my case that whenever I call dollar sign ob, it's tell it that it's calling jQuery and to execute the code as jQuery and not to interfere with anything else. So um, bef when you normally call a jQuery object like before a select or something, you put the name of your custom variable. That's that's why I recommend put a dollar sign. So you don't get confused. So what we're going to do now is replace every instance of the standard object selector. So in this case, there's two, there's two with our custom no conflict object selector. So we're just going to put dollar sign ob because that's what we've set the variable to, and dollar sign ob in both instances. So if we say now. It's, it's gotten rid of all the links on the page. Now you just see this is a bunch of bullets and there's no nav. There's no nav menu, so that that's a um, Get all A tags and hide all the links is now working. So to summarize, what you do is do a custom call to your custom JavaScript file in your info file. Set up a variable for an object. And set it to J jQuery no conflict, and then apply that to all the jQuery commands. So that was a lot of a lot of information. I kind of floundered my way through there, but I hope you got something out of this video, and I hope it helped you. If, if you like this video, please check out more videos, and be sure to check out the previous Drupal Seven videos that I'll put in the annotations. If you want more on this topic, thanks for watching this video and I hope it helped you. Bye bye.